For much of the 20th century, our world was gripped by a titanic struggle between two ideologies symbolically divided by the Berlin Wall. Capitalism in the West, communism in the East. The war might have been cold, but it was still a war. It was waged not by soldiers, but by spies. Its objectives were not territories, but secrets. Thousands spent their lives and gave their lives in their pursuit. It was on one of these benches in London's Regent's Park that a young Cambridge graduate would come to sit and to meet his KGB handler. Since his student days, he'd been a committed communist, but on strict instructions from Moscow, he kept that well hidden. And this enabled him to enter the shadows of the British secret establishment in what the world knows as MI6. And he climbed very high, almost to the very top, in fact. His name was Kim Philby. In 1949, Philby was sent by MI6 to Washington DC as Britain's chief liaison with the brand new CIA. Throughout his Washington years, he would meet an old friend for lunch once a week. That was James Jesus Angleton, the CIA's head of counterintelligence. They would talk and drink and talk. But on both sides of the Atlantic, agents in MI5 and the FBI had their suspicions about Philby's true loyalties. And soon questions about Philby were even being asked in the House of Commons in the British Parliament. But he was defended to the hilt by his friends in MI6 and in the CIA including by Angleton. But throughout these years, Philby had been passing everything he found out on to Moscow. And soon even his closest friends had to accept the weight of evidence. And so Philby defected to Russia on the 23rd of January 1963. Angleton in particular was devastated. His friend was a traitor. More importantly, those lunches in Washington were not mere socialising. Philby ruthlessly pumped him for information, and Angleton never recovered. He saw Philby's hand behind every setback suffered by the West in the 60s and 70s, even though the truth was that Philby was an alcoholic, washed-up ex-spy who wasn't even trusted by the Russians. But Angleton was convinced. He was paranoid. He was profoundly unstable. But that's what suspicion does. It isolates and alienates us. It even drives us mad. And it was Angleton himself who likened the suspicions of the counterintelligence world to wandering in a wilderness of mirrors. Is there any turning back from betrayal? Is there any way out from paranoia? We might not be spies, but the West is overwhelmed by a culture of suspicion. Are we not all entering? a wilderness of mirrors.